Now, let's talk a little bit about getting down to the fish. Now, there's a there's a uh, idea that I have. If you don't feel the bounce, that means you don't feel the bounce on the bottom of the river, bottom of the creek. You are not going to catch steelhead. In the fall, steelhead will have a tendency that sometimes people will catch them on top. In the spring, when the water's cold, they're not coming to the top. That means you have to go down bottom to get them. So, I'm going to make sure I feel it. So I'm going to use weighted flies, which we're getting ready to get to. And if I need to, I'll put split shot on my leader, which I don't like to do. But if you have to, you have to. So uh, that's a little experimentation. You're going to feel that out before you get happy with it. So please be aware of that. Please experiment. Another thing, too, is the water that I choose. Now what I will do when I go from, uh, uh, when I'm traveling from Stanley to Chalice, I will actually look for fish. I'll stop at a number of holes that I like to fish. I will look for them in the shadows, in the shallows, excuse me. And the reason for that, if fish are there and they're there in good numbers, you're going to catch them. Steelhead are reasonably aggressive. So if they're there, you're going to catch them. If not, and you can't see them, then what I'm going to look for is any kind of seams any kind of areas where I know the fish can hide behind, any kind of areas where I feel fish will be held up, usually they will be there. Another thing is water temperature. If the water is 38 and below, you're going to have a little more difficult time fishing. So what I do is I'll wait till I get the water temperature about 38 degrees, and what I'll do is if, if I'm in Stanley and it's really cold, which is quite often the case, I will move towards the chalice. Once you get out of the canyon area, the water temperature has a temp, uh, tendency to go up. And also the air temperature goes up, which goes together. So uh, 38 to 42 degrees is where I want to see that water temperature. And also that water temperature means fish will be moving, they'll be active. So it works out well. And what I'll do is once I move down towards chalice in the morning to fish, and, um, and I'm doing reasonably well as the day gets warmer and the day progresses. I'll move towards Stanley to some uh, nice holes that I like to fish up there. Now I'm not going to tell you what rock to stand on, but if you give us a call here at the store, email me, I will at least share some of my information with you. Okay, so let's go to the hardware, what we're going to talk about, the flies I like to use in that area. First of all, I like strike indicator. I want to know what my fly, my fly line is doing all the time. There is so often that you get a strike and the best fly fisherman and the best bait fisherman or whatever will never even know this fish is there. Use a good strike indicator. These are thingamabobbers. And right here we have the, uh, the uh, cloth type, I guess you would say, or the fabric type. You see this dip, move to the right, move to the left, forward, backwards, anything, I am setting the hook. Now unlike trout fishing where you just lift your rod up, we're really giving this a firm, aggressive hook set because the fish mouth is very, very hard and you want to make sure you hook that fish. There's been so many times I see gentlemen, ladies, pick their rod up thinking they have the fish and guess what, the fish might be there but it's not there long because you didn't get a good hook set. So strike indicators are important. I use this size right here, it's about an inch in diameter, or even the larger size. I like to try to get away with the smaller size for the simple reason is these are easier to cast. And once you put a large one on there, you'll see that your casting will be cut down significantly. So I go with the smaller size. I also use these. I prefer the thingamabobbers. If you're going to use these, you're going to need a little bit of float to put on here to keep them uh, uh, floating. Okay, now we got that out of the way. Let's talk about fly selection. Uh, my, my ideal fly selection for that area is I like to use a stone fly as my main fly. Now you can use what you want, I just know what works for me. And there's a reason for that. In the spring, there's actually a spring stone that does not fly that hatches and they will become, uh, and they immediately try to get up on the shore and they're a little helpless and fish love them. So what we do is we take a few of them. Now one thing that's important about these is you'll notice they're weighted. Here it has an hour bell, uh, hourglass uh, weight on it tied in there. Here you'll just see large beads. Now this will help your fly get down to the bottom because you remember as I said earlier if you're not on the bottom, if you're not bouncing on the bottom, guess what? You're not catching fish. 
If you remember anything about this, you want to remember that. So we're going to use these Kaufman stones. Now I use Kaufman stones on the Grand Ron, I use them on the Salmon River, I've used them on the Clearwater, they always work. Now with the Clearwater, it's a little different fishery and I will use more of the traditional egg patterns, egg sucking leeches, bunny leeches, etc. But when I'm fishing the salmon in the spring, it's always Kaufman stones. Now for some reason, and I haven't really figured it out, one year it will be glow bugs. And you'll notice how small the glow bugs are. And that will be my dropper, unweighted. And here's a glow bug here that's a, a special one. They're kind of stuck together here. There we go, I took them apart. It's actually got a bead in there, and then a, on the outside they put a material on there, so it, it, when a fish grabs it, it actually condenses itself, and it makes it easier for the fish to grab the hook. Now, it's the only drawback with a bead being on a hook is the fish has a hard time catching itself. It goes to bite it, and guess what? It comes up with the, the bead, not the hook. So uh, I like this idea where they put that material over the bead. Now one thing, again, the reason why I like using that fluorocarbon, it makes that bead oscillate in the water, and that's very important to me. I want a lot of movement. Okay, the other thing that we use here, if glow bugs aren't working, by the way, and if fish are in the water and you see fish in the water and things aren't working for you, change. Do not be stuck on one fly, one fly alone. Here you have the uh, Prince Nymph, very large size, it's about a size 10. And I like Prince Nymphs, and this last year Prince Nymphs is what worked. So in some years it'll be the glow bugs, you'll find either way. And then another thing is too, sometimes a different color will work. So I'll bring assorted glow bugs, colors, assorted Prince Nymphs, but again, you'll see these are weighted. I've used them both weighted and non-weighted, and it depends on how uh, the water is and how deep it is where I'll decide which one I'll use. One thing about these are very light, even with the bead on there, so these will oscillate in the water. So if I'm working well in the Prince Nymphs, I'll go ahead and use the Prince Nymphs. If I'm going on glow bugs, I'll work the glow bugs. Don't be shy about using egg patterns. Just that time of year, egg patterns just don't seem to work real well for me. So that's it for our uh, video today. I hope to see you on the water. And if you have any questions about steelhead fishing in the spring and, and the Salmon, era, uh, Salmon River and Stanley area, give us a call here at 454-8188, area code 208 for you out-of-towners, or just email us at uh, www.anglershabitat.com. This is Wayne Johnson once again with Anglers Habitat. Thank you very much.